um, at the Spray Memorial Institute, where he, where he served as executive director for the past 22 years, Jim has designed and funded initiatives to address asthma, oral health, patient safety, and care for the underserved. For his part, Dan works to make lives better in Chicago through technology at the Smart Chicago Collaborative and has a background in creating technology, advocating for, and writing policy, and working to improve how communities use data to make decisions and improve conditions. Welcome, Jim and Dan. Thank you very much. Getting it all said, everyone gets their 15 minutes of pain, we get 20. But the real issue is that this is the 15 minutes of pain for health. And I think one of the reasons that we're here is that we've seen the script before. The actors are different now because they are health care institutions, uh, consumers of health care, and all of you who are interested in making a, a better bridge between where we were to where we want to be. Uh, I've, I've been um, very impressed with the way the conference has been organized because when Dwayne talked about, about what we should be doing. He said, we're building an arch. We're building an arc, a story, uh, a narrative. And I think that's true uh, because I resonated with a lot of the presentations I've heard already today. Uh, and I think that you built for what we're doing here. Uh, what, what we've done is a three-phase process that I really believe in. Uh, phase one is get informed. Uh, maybe it's informed with a lot of bad news. Phase two is get angry about what you just learned. And phase three is to do something about it, get going. So I think we are in a very um, lurchy state of partnership. Uh, Dan used the word coordinated care. That uses a, a, it could be a past tense coordinated, except we haven't coordinated care. We are coordinating, or we are trying to find ways to coordinate care. So this technology is going to help in a number of ways. Primary way is that it brings tools to users who never thought about health or how to connect to healthcare and promote wellness. I have a history of, of looking at problems at the Sprague Institute, which is a 102-year-old foundation. Its mission is to investigate the cause of disease and relieve and prevent human suffering in the city of Chicago. I'm not sure that technology prevents human suffering. I know I've suffered with technology. <laughs> but I think the opportunity here is to use technology to inform people, uh, to link them to resources, and to build change. Uh, Twelve years ago, the board of the Institute said, what's our next deal? And we looked around, and we realized that there was an obesity problem that few were addressing. So we created CLOC, the Consortium to Lower Obesity in Chicago Children. And it started with 80 people, as uh, some of us know in this room who were at the first meeting. We have 3,000 people working on obesity prevention in Chicago. It's a national and an international model. And we brought to the table anybody who had a role to play. Uh, we have McDonald's there. We have uh, a lot of food companies. We have Pepsi and, and others because they're part of the conversation. We also have the advocates, the nutritionists, the families, the schools, the parks, uh, government units. And the reason it works is because everyone doesn't agree. But we have enough data and we realize more people needed to uh, understand what we do and then get angry and then get organized. Uh, Steve Whitman at Sinai Urban Health Institute. Uh, did a project for the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, which extensively surveyed uh, several Chicago neighborhoods. The worst community was Humboldt Park. It's one-third Puerto Rican, one-third African American, one-third Yupify. And the health statistics in this community were horrific, worst of the six in his survey. So when Steve gave the presentation, I said, great. I can't sleep tonight having heard this news. What are we going to do about it? And Steve's an epidemiologist. He said, well, I did my report. It's all fine. Done. And I said, no, we're not getting away with that. So we took Clock's energy and his data and moved into uh, organizing in Humboldt Park. And we created a group called Co-op Humboldt Park. And we learned a lot about what the community knew. And when the community learned the statistics that Steve had taken on their health, 
they got angry and they got organized. And the community of wellness was the label they put on their initiative. And we started really doing heavier duty interventions on obesity prevention. And what did we learn? In an interview with mom, when you showed her the chart, just drawing line drawings, of children body type from anorexic to grossly overweight. Mom would always point the middle the middle drawing. My kid's normal. No, actually, Mom, your kid's overweight. Here are the statistics. When Mom learned that from Clock, she got concerned because nobody wants an unhealthy child. When she went to the doctor, doctor never said anything during the well child visit because the doctor had no tools to offer the mom or the child. No bariatric surgery for an eight-year-old. No pills. So prevention is the model. And we started working at that because the information motivated that community. And we didn't do as well as San Diego, but we did reduce obesity in children going into kindergarten uh, by two percentage points, which was 6,000 fewer overweight kids. So you can do it, but it starts with information. With that as a kind of prologue, the question was, OK, how can we take some other information, not so specific to neighborhoods, and make it accessible to anybody who wants it? Now, there's the able caller in the room who's got lots of data and knows how to crank it. And there's Mrs. Smith, who's going to the library to borrow their computer and the second most requested for a, a type of assistance at the public libraries in Chicago, first is, I need a job, help me fill out this online form. Second topic is help. She wants information. So we know there's a need out there, and there's a, an inherent interest. And this panel is about the village and about collaboration. So you meet a guy named Dan, and he's in charge of the Smart Chicago Collaborative. And you say, OK. That's the partnership we want to have. So we have been working to create uh, something that is accessible to the average person uh, or the researcher that is easily available. And that becomes the baseline. And this is really a work in progress uh, to bring in all sorts of information and make it useful so that people understand where they live, affects their health, how that affects them, and where they might find the resources to make change or to improve their situation. We're doing a lot of other things, including stealing some broadband money from the feds and uh, employing people we call health IT navigators. Uh, they're armed with iPads or laptops. They go into F3HC waiting rooms. Uh, they meet with someone who's never seen or touched a computer. They encourage them to do that. Once they hook them on that, they invite them to look at their Electronic health record, because there is one in this clinic. They don't know that. The doctors are telling them that. That can be a point of conversation. It opens up the dialogue. These conversations last about 12 to 15 minutes on average. And by the time they're finished, they learn something about technology. They maybe have found a video that helps them use their asthma inhaler or learn something else in their language of greater comfort. Uh, and they move into the clinical setting uh, with a new set of information. We're, we're trying to support the system, and we are also subverting the system. And I think you are all revolutionaries in your own way. Uh, and that maybe is what keeps you here at this hour. Uh, but the Chicago Health Atlas is a platform we're hoping will attract a lot of other uh, data donors, data owners. We started with municipal and, and federal and state information, and we're hoping to broaden that out. And we hope that many of you will collaborate with us and participate with us. So Dan, why don't you talk a little bit about what you've done? So this is good. If you didn't already know, now you know why Jim Alexander is the, uh, it's who he is. And uh, when we have a panel 
uh, the, the thought here is about it takes a village. And uh, Jim has been the uh, probably the, the best thinker, funder, and doer of the things that we're talking about for years. So I do a lot of stuff at Smart Chicago Collaborative. Um, this is one thing that this entire uh, site we want to go through um, in the context of It Takes a Village is, um, is completely uh, Jim's idea. So I need to be able to see this thing. You guys can see it. Yeah. All right, so check it out. So the Chicago Tell me. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm going to get down. All right, so Chicago Health Atlas is a, and by the way, this is not a time between 4 and 4, whatever, 350 and 410 when we get up and talk about how great our website is. This is a time where we get up and talk about how much work there is to do, how bad our website is, right? How much better it has to be. But we're talking about how many people are already involved. Many of you are here in this room. And, and, it, and it's a model for collaboration. It's a model for what um, Stefan and, and, and others who put this, this together were into, which is that it takes a village. So smart, uh, the Chicago Health Atlas is a place where you can be a city information about health trends and take action near you to improve your own health. So we'll break that down in terms of uh, the website. So it's just a place, it's pretty simple. We take information from a number of partners, including government, the Chicago Department of Public Health, which I discovered, frankly, recently, gets most of its information from the Illinois Department of Public Health with regard to uh, clinical, a lot of the stuff we're talking about, the uh, mortality rates, um, the, the, the stuff that you have to report up to the state, and then the state brings that back to the city, and the city publishes it to the data portal, and then before they publish it to the data portal, they put it down into the 77 neighborhood areas. Right? So you can imagine what I just said, it's a lot of gymnastics. People receive health care, people die, people, people you know, have conditions, it gets reported to the state, the state does stuff with it, they send it back to the city, the city puts it in terms of something that's meaningful to them, which is important, we talked about this this morning, these 77 community areas here in Chicago. So they express it in, in those terms, and we just put it on a map, and you know, Avondale is, is, a, is a neighborhood in Chicago, and we take uh, other government information, see demographics over here, just some brief stuff, stuff that's already available, it's basically just a lookup tool. But you can imagine the information that's already on here from the census, from IDPH, from CDPH, um, and the Chicago Department of Public Health is a great partner on this. They're actually a, um, you know, a, a real thinker as well in terms of how we talk about the information. So it's one thing to just put um, these conditions on, on a map, and it's another thing altogether to get people to understand it. So that's um, the government partners. Again, it takes a village. Um, and we need more data. It's, it's OK. It's pretty good. We have you know, births, deaths, uh, cause of death, crime is another data type that we get. Uh, crime data is a very common thing to map. It's, uh, I used to do it on a website called Everyblock. It's people like to, to look at that. It's almost, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things that everybody loves to look up, right? They want to see crime near them. And go, oh, well, it's not so bad because it happened two blocks away. Or it's not so bad because it's another neighborhood. Um, it can be really harmful, frankly, I believe. I've come to believe that it is harmful to break ourselves down like that. And, you know, but, but we do it. And I think it's natural. Um, but we take the crime data, a couple of ones that are pretty closely related to health, uh, assault, murder, um, things along those lines. So that's government data. Um, healthcare institutions. This is where the work of Abel Co. and, and his partners, uh, uh, large hospital institutions. I could probably rattle them off the top of my head, and then I'd get one wrong, and then that would be bad. So I'll just say large healthcare institutions here in Chicago um, that uh, take, he takes uh, with his team clinical data, actual clinical data from uh, uh, you know, EHR and anonymize. So a model for anonymizing the data and then presenting, we have nine conditions currently on Chicago Health Atlas. So you can find out prevalence of particular diseases or conditions, nine of them, and we're, we're looking to build that up um, in, in near you. Yep. 
Let's assume the buyer patient gets sick. Do you think anonymized clinical bed. Right. So uh, anonymized clinical bed. Um, uh, developers. So uh, you know, I at Smart Chicago, we hired a number of developers. We got a number of civic uh, civic innovators involved. Uh, Derek Gator from uh, uh, DataMain, um, who's housed here at the at, at 1871. We hired him to do a lot of the mapping and. Um, uh, believe it or not, Purple Binder, um, uh, to, uh, uh, to present all of the uh, healthcare institutions. So it's, so it's a matter of you're able to see broadly conditions near you, things are, that are going on near you, and then you're able to find out um, where you can take charge of your own condition. So again, it takes a village. All of these partners um, to do this. So now based on the funding from Spring and our model for this website, we um, uh, were able to fund Purple Binder to create their first API, their first method for querying their own website so that people can find out about all of these great health and actually lots of other institutions like health, uh, uh, daycare and you know social services agencies near them. So we're able to influence the market in a way that made things better, that made things more open. And this is the part where it's not good enough. So it's a nice website, okay? But again, I'm not here to talk about how great my website is. It's perfectly fine. It is a model, however, for the work that there is to be done. There's clearly not enough of a feel of, of a, let's put it this way. I, I don't feel that in this space, and then I'm in a, I'm in a I come from uh, the more web technology world and the open data world. I've, I've had uh, some, you know, I've done some work in in the open data uh, world, especially uh, at the city level. And clearly, open data is not in our hearts at this time. I think. What do you got? Two, three minutes? Three minutes. And we'll talk about how open data is not. Let's talk about our hearts now that we have three minutes. <laughs> Let's talk about how we feel about open data. So. Um, you know, I would really love everybody in the room. Everybody who has is is a holder of data. Everybody who talked, I heard I heard about a lot of data today. If every day you woke up and said, "What can I do to publish more data? What can I do to ethically, legally, and responsibly publish more information about health so we can make everybody's lives better?" That'd be awesome. Funders, uh, so just some logos. You gotta have uh, you gotta have a bunch of logos on the screen, don't you? <laughs> this is logos on the screen. These are the healthcare institutions. Everyone's gonna do them off the top of my head. I don't have to. Bam. These are the developers. Wow, I was able to say them all. Uh, here's the governments. Wow, there it is. City Chicago. Wow, sorry. IDPH, of course, very important. Uh, funders and then Sprague, and of course, uh, the Chicago Community Trust and the MacArthur Foundation. And the city of Chicago are the uh, uh, founding members of the Chicago uh, uh, Smart Chicago Collaborative. Uh, that's that's thank you. That's us. Let's do this.